what's going on everyone it's Mike back again and uh, yeah this is just a little bit of a news roundup for Everton obviously we try to do a video every couple of days and from next week it's going to massively change so you've got a predictions video on Monday for the Premier League game so all 10 games over the week obviously including the Merseyside derby the game that Everton will obviously win um, you've got previews match reactions I'm going to try and do a watch along as well so on Sunday night um, if you want to tune in and you want to watch me, hopefully with John, although I'm trying to sort out the streaming, um, it will definitely at least be with me. Watching the game, I'm seeing it as, as, as I see it as well, and we get to react together. So that could be interesting, could be fun, um, and I am hope you enjoy it as well. Just trying to provide you with a little bit more, little bit more content. Um, and then obviously John will be doing a roundup video after. So we're trying to just give you a little bit more... Um, other content um, so yeah I hope everyone's all right more most importantly let's go through some of the news obviously I've got my laptop here and just going through some of the bits and bobs that have been on the internet so first of all let's talk about Leeds friendly Everton had a friendly today against an Everton A team and an Everton B team essentially it was just 22 odd players maybe 25 players split between two teams they played at Goodison and um, some of the pictures are incredible some of the pictures can I just say Dominic Calvert Lewin's fucking thigh is is sculpted from God. Like, have you seen the muscle that ha that man has in his fucking legs? Is out. What, I was just like, what, what are you what are you meant to do with that man? Whew, Jesus Christ. Um, obviously, we don't really massively know the scores, and equally, it doesn't really matter. The main thing for us is that we don't get any injuries because, look. Gomez has been linked with an injury. Fabian Dalph has been linked with an injury. There's already some longer-term players, again, like Gabarmin, who's now injured. There's also another one, Theo Walcott. He's out for the remainder of the season, probably to next year. So, look, we're seeing this time and time again, injury after injury. So, I want us to be really slowly getting into the Merseyside derby because, look, that game is irrelevant. That game's irrelevant. Because the fact of the matter is Everton are going to turn up with Carlo Ancelotti and we're going to sweep them aside and we're going to win the game. So there is no, you know, I'm not fixated on that game. I want us to go and get the three points, start the season well. Because, you know, I don't want it to be that we remember the tail end of last season where we got a 1-1 draw against Man United for a decision that was a fucking joke the last time we was at Goodison. Um, and I don't want that. I want us to beat Liverpool, convincingly turn up and show them what we've got, show them what Ancelotti's been doing and show them how capable we really are going forward. Um, other news, and there's some of uh, transfer news. Morgan Schneider, it looks like Nice have agreed a €2 million Euro move for him. This is positive for me. Not, not, not because Morgan Schneider's leaving and you obviously all know I've had a few things to say about Morgan Schneider in, in the past. But... Um, we're getting 120 or 100 grand off our wage bill for a player that isn't good enough. Um, he's 31 years old. He's got one year left on his contract. You know, getting a 2 million euro move now, so 1.8 million, and then saving 5 million pound in wages is, is a massive, massive boost, especially when you're bringing in players like Magalas um, and, and Todiba, who are genuinely going to not demand that sort of wage. So all of a sudden, in terms of the financial fair play, that massively helps us. Like that's really positive. And, and that's something that I think people are forgetting to look at when they look at the transfer fee. Actually, if you break it down, it's £7.5 million. Pounds, and that I'm fine with. That I'm fine with. You're saving £7.5 million pounds from day one of next season. Gives you some room. Gives you some room to manoeuvre. You know, there's other players... Gilfie Sigurdsson, if somebody offered me £5 million for Gilfie Sigurdsson, I'd probably snap the hand off because I save on the wages. Do you get what I'm saying? Theo Walcott, he's another one. I'd do exactly the same. You know, so these players, it's good to get them off the books and good to get them moving. Um, another mention, Thiago Silva. So this has been interesting. So Thiago Silva's been linked again. And he's come out and says, look, I'm not finished in Europe. That's really positive because he's come out and he's commented on Ancelotti. He's come out and he's said that he's not finished in Europe. Now, look, we all know Thiago Silva is the wrong end of 30. You know, he's, 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 well, he's, he's 34, I think, or 35. He hasn't necessarily got long left. But I would take Thiago Silva on a two-year deal. No problem. Because I thought Gareth Barry did a good job. And if I relate a player of Gareth Barry's quality 
I, I can say that Thiago Silva is a quality player. So bringing him in for two years, I don't massively see the harm. You know, it, it was similar to Rooney, but that didn't work out. But bringing in players of that sort of quality or that experience, it's not a fucking negative when you've got Mason Holgate in that side, when you've got some of the young lads like Braithwaite. It, it, it's good for them because there's going to be a lot of these youngsters coming through the ranks, hopefully, at Everton and stepping up into the first team. And no disrespect, we don't necessarily want another Tom Davis. We want someone who is showing capable, showing how good they are and delivering on it. And Tom Davis doesn't do that. But hopefully he can help the players, the younger ones, show that and show the experience that they need to be getting. You know, giving them a pep talk. Look, when I played in the Champions League or when I played in the in the World Cup, this is the way I played against X player or this is the way I do that. It Honestly, that sort of level of, of intelligence is... He is, is, is essential. You know, Romelu Lukaku, he had Samuel Eto'o coming. And one of the things Martinez said at the time is he would assist him, he would support him. Um, and they had a good relationship. So, so look, if Silva comes into our club, I've got nothing wrong with that. Nothing. Um, obviously, Magalos as well. He's, he's, he's popped up again. Now, this... Obviously, we all thought... Are we losing regardless? Well, you know, we all was convinced he was signing for Everton. He winked on webcam and he, oh, it sounds awful, doesn't it? Um, he's done a lot of things to suggest he's signing for us. But who knows? Do you get what I mean? Who knows? But what I, what I will say, look, is if Everton lose a Michael Keane, for example, I've got no problem with Magalas and Tadebo coming in. They seem good players. Personally, I've always said, and I'll say it again, I want Premier League experience, but it's difficult to get that without getting into the Premier League and making it. And then Michael Keane's got Premier League experience, but it's not good enough at the level we want to get to. You know, even though he's an England international, he's not used to playing in Europe. He's not used to challenging to get into Champions League spots. And that's what Everton need. Everton need to be bold and brash with the signings that they're going for. And I just think Magalos... He, he could fit the bill. He could fit the bill. Um, apparently, his price tags come down, which would be great. So, again, it's not the 30 million euros. It might be 25 million, which all helps. All of this helps. So, yeah, I, I'm fairly confident that Everton will get a decent... Uh, I, I, I think Everton will have a decent window. And I, I know a lot of people are panicking about money in the club and money everywhere. And I do, I do get that. This is the one I want to lead with, James Rodriguez. Obviously, he's been linked with us several times now during this tran well, during the last few weeks. J James Rodriguez is, is a good player, and when I was thinking of price tags, I was thinking, look, it's going to be forty million. I think Real Madrid have come out and said they'll take twenty eight million, which which might even move. Apparently, we're battling with Man United, and Shalotti likes him. Now, as I see, James Rodriguez. Coming into Everton Football Club. It's been built up by some people as this game-changing signing. I don't necessarily think it's a game-changing signing. I don't. But what I do think it is, it's a signing where people will go, right, Everton are going to get these players that have got a good reputation. You know, James Rodriguez has a decent reputation because of his experiences with Colombia. Some of the games he's played for Madrid. But he's never really shown the quality at top level. Consistency has, has killed him at times. Now, if we can get James Rodriguez for £28 million, I'm sure he's a better replacement for a central midfielder or a cam than Sigurdsson. You know, and, and that's what I mean. I want goals from midfield, and I'm hoping that, that Rodriguez could do that. Or James Rodriguez, sorry, I keep calling him James. But I'm hoping that he could do that. He could get goals from midfield. He could make them surging runs because it's something Everton lack. We lack it massively. And unless that changes... Nothing's going to happen that's exciting from the middle of the park. You know, losing 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 Morgan Schneiderlin is no big miss. Losing Fabian Delph is no big miss. Losing Sigurdsson is no big miss. There's no player in the middle of the park that you will go, we're going to miss him. And that's what kills Everton. Every single team in the Premier League know that Everton are weak in the middle of the park. You know... Liverpool, you know, they'll use that to their advantage next week and they'll try and stick one out of them and Henderson in the middle who will no doubt battle it out with players like 
Morgan Schneiderlin and Fabian Delph. And you just know that Everton will not win that game in the middle of the park. But where they will win it is if they exploit the room that Trent Alexander-Arnold and Robertson leave. I'm going into a match preview there. But that's where Everton can exploit that. That's when Everton can exploit the wings and deliver balls into Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Or get the ball into feet. Or, sh- or get Richarlison to twist Van Dijk's arsehole completely off. So we need to respect the fact that Everton need goals in midfield. And at this moment in time, they just haven't got them. He does add that. And that's that's the positive to this. So, look, anyway, look, apart from that, that is it. That's that's this video done. Um, the only other thing I was going to mention is, look, I'm going to be doing, um, me and John discussed this, we're going to be doing a competition um, where I want uh, your kids or yourselves to draw me a picture of a good Everton moment, a favourite player, uh, something great about Everton, something related to Everton. And the winner, the winner will get a prize, first and foremost. I haven't decided what the prize is yet, but it will be, you know, a prize, like an Amazon voucher or something. And what we'll do, we will have them, print them, them, that picture made into a T-shirt art, and that will be on our website. So we will use that as your design, your your design, and what we'll do is we'll try and put if not all of it, some of it, whatever it costs, towards charity of your choice. Because um, I am passionate about the kids and, and, and equally the adults doing something while they're, you know, a bit bored at home or a bit upset or a bit miserable. So, you know, try and get people to do something that's a little bit entertaining for them and hopefully they get a bit of credit for it. So, um, yeah, guys, apart from that, look, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a quick video, quick whistle top. John's not in it. Obviously, me and John both need to do content on our own. You know, part of the Blue Boys Network is, you know, we're not just going to do videos together, 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 together. Because to be honest, John's a pain in the arse. You know, and, and he'll watch this video and he'll agree with me. He'll know that he is a massive pain in my ass. So, um, this video is just me. Hope you enjoyed it. And, um, yeah, stay safe, keep smiling, and I'll see you for the next video, Blues. Peace. Seeing monsters at your window. No, you can't sleep. You pretend, though. You